This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. And I want to take the time to uh, talk about what we call the venture uh, ecosystem. And what I want to do in the following 20 minutes is really to tell you a little bit about um, the way we think about this. So I have essentially a, a goal is to give you um, a list of the four actors as we see them. I want to show you six current trends that are affecting and changing this ecosystem. And I want to summarize with three ongoing trends. So pay attention to the three current, uh, uh, six current trends which may change and the three ongoing trends. The goal of this framework is essentially to create a language that will enable us to communicate uh, more efficiently about the uh, different parts of this ecosystem that we call a venture. This is a visual summary of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, what you see here on the right are the four actors. And on the left, you see the pressures. And what I did was to divide them. These three ones affect the top. And these three ones affect the bottom. And it will make sense in a second. The four actors, as I see them, starting from the bottom, and it will be quite simple for those of you who are familiar or are in the field, entrepreneurs. Those are the leaders, those are the people that are innovators, those are the people that come up with the ideas and want to create up new companies. We have the venture capital people, the people who are putting money in the hands of the entrepreneurs or in the hands of the idea. We have the institutional and investors. Uh, these are the people that essentially put money inside the venture capital firm. These are the people um, we like to call them pension funds, but this is a general name, sovereign funds, family offices. These are people who have millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and they select the venture capital to put the money inside the uh, entrepreneurs. And then on top of them, we have the public authorities. Public authorities, we mean governments, we mean cities, uh, we mean regions. The public authorities are the ones that set the rules of the game. So these are the four actors. When you look at these actors and you sort of delve into it, and again, the point now is not to go into all the details. You, you can definitely get them in the, in the um, full paper that happens to be here. Um, is that they have what we call a value chain. And this value chain includes several steps. And uh, we listed them here. Again, the, the, the details are not critical now. The point is that when we talk about changes, in the ecosystem, we essentially talk about changes in the different steps. And sometimes it's a change in one step, sometimes it's a change in several steps, sometimes it's a change in the relationship between one, one value chain to another value chain. And you will see it in a second. Let me start by looking at the trends that are changing the way we innovate. So I call it from the bottom because it comes down from the entrepreneurs. And I want to just list three things that I think are now happening and are changing a little bit the way companies, new companies are uh, created. Perhaps the most important uh, change that I see now is exemplified by this company. How many people here are familiar with intellectual ventures? You know what they do? OK. So that would be quite new to you. Uh, can we show the movie, please? We believe that inventions are valuable and transformative. From ancient times to the more recent past. Invention is as close to magic as we'll ever see. But today, I, or you, or millions of other people, could come up with an idea that says, you know, if we do this a different way, that solves huge problems. Today, we're at a point in time where the invention marketplace is exploding with growth. With growth 
comes complexity and possibility for participants within the global invention marketplace. Because in this marketplace, every invention is an opportunity. Any problem we have in society that is a technological problem, or, or at least in part can be reduced to a technology problem, you can imagine someone inventing. Every invention is an investment. The global IP market that we've been talking about for over a decade has now become part of the central narrative thread of government, finance, and business around the world. Every invention is a story. This guy really loves invention and understands uh, the importance of invention in the marketplace. I always thought I want to try my own business, a company that will be based on IP and will be around innovation and business. IV is the leader in the business of invention. We believe that ideas are valuable. Inventions matter. And in today's high-tech industries, IV, well, we see ourselves as leaders across the entire spectrum of invention. We invent ourselves, we partner with inventors around the world, and we invest in invention. In fact, we're one of the most prolific inventors in the world. We're the 17th largest inventor in the world, and we are the fifth largest in the United States. With some of our most recent inventions spawning our second spin-out, Chi Meta. Uh, we leverage 107 patents. We grow out of an ecosystem that embraces the entire uh, Intellectual Ventures organization. We wouldn't be here without literally the entire um, set of capabilities that were organized to allow such a company as Chi Meta to spring into existence. In addition, our business model allows the inventors, universities, and technology companies we work with to sell their patents, license our portfolio, partner with us to invent. As a leader, it's also our privilege to give back to our communities. Okay. So, I'm not sure if you got it, but this company is single-handedly changing the venture ecosystem. Why? Just one of their programs basically works in the following way. They have 4,000 people all over the world. I happen to be one of them. And every month, we get an email from them. It's called an RFI, Request for Ideas. And this request for idea, they basically encourage us to think about something. So we got a request for idea that looks like that. Uh, hip replacement in the US is going to be a $5 billion market in five years. What can be done? That's it. Another one that we got was currently Bambuk uh, rises uh, 10 centimeters a day. We think that in three years, through genetic engineering, it's going to go to one meter a day. Please design a house that builds itself. This is, these are true RFIs that they are sending. Uh, another one, which is kind of interesting, was that um, RFI, which caught my attention, is the following. Many more people have phones and they happen to be together in the same room or the same area. What can be done with that? So we and some of our friends, who happen to be in the same network, sat down for three hours and said to ourselves, what can be done with phones? How many people have phones, by the way? OK, so here's an example. What can be done with having three or four or five phones in the same room? And we thought about a few ideas. We wrote them up. One idea was they can play games, another idea was this, another idea was that, etc. And we essentially packed that idea into one page. There's a special form that they, we went into the website, we logged in, we put the sign, 
Two weeks later, we got one rejection, two rejection, and the third one was accepted. At the moment it was accepted, I got in my um, um, PayPal uh, announcement, $15,000 was deposited in your account. And that's it, that's the business. They're not even dealing with patents, they are dealing with ideas, they are buying ideas. And what do they do? Essentially with this RFI of the 4,000 people, maybe 100 replied. Of that, they chose maybe 40. But at the end of the process, they had 40 patents on that particular thing and they created a basket. Now imagine the impact of such a change on the nature of the business. As an entrepreneur, I don't need to set up a company. I can just come up and do ideas. Also, many, many people have ideas, but they do not want to do companies. So that's one effect. Another effect is on companies. They don't need to come up with ideas. They can just go to the website, go to their license, select of the hundreds of patents that are out there, and it's not just one patent, it's basket of patents, and take it from there. <coughs> A wonderful change. And this is just one example to how this is changing the way the ecosystem is working. Another one uh, of the changes, which is extremely powerful in the area of uh, IT, is the rise of what we call innovation uh, platforms. Now, this is a whole new dimension, but let me give you just the example of Waze. Uh, how many people here familiar with Waze? Israeli company? Super, super. So, Waze essentially was started because we had GPS, because we had phones, and because we had 3G that we now could use for free. But remember, when they started, which was five years ago, it was not free. They have forecasted that the cost of this will going to go down, and then of course the end result is that Google bought them for a uh, billion dollars. In the area of IT, we now have a collection of platforms that enable us to do innovation. This changes the entire way. The number one platform for innovation in IT is, of course, Amazon. Because Amazon allows small companies to do uh, software as service and changes the way new companies are created. We don't need servers, we don't need this, we just come up with the idea, we experiment, we can change it quickly, we can set up a new server, etc., etc., etc. So that's the second trend that changes the ecosystem. Yet another one, which I think is quite fascinating, is the effect of Kickstarters on certain type of company. In fact, the second part of the day is all about crowdfunding, because I think this is one of the more interesting trends that we see now uh, today. But just follow the list of events, financing event of a company called Oculus Rift. So Oculus Rift makes uh, glasses to create three-dimensional uh, representation. It starts from uh, 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 the bottom here. Look here. Oh, this is really not working. Oh, okay. Look here. They received $2.4 million in crowdfunding. By the way, they did want $250,000. So they got 10 times more here. $2.4 million. Couple of months later, $16 million, Series A. One, and that's a high valuation, a, a, a lot of money for uh, a Series A. Why? Because they already had clients in place. Fast forward, they got $75 million here. <coughs> And of course, what happened? A couple of months later, they were simply bought by Facebook for $2 billion. This is super, super, super speedy. Now, my claim is that this very rapid uh, pace of investment and growth of the company stems from simply solving the most important problem in a new company. They had clients already. Thousands of clients. They essentially had clients before they had a product. And that completely changes the way. In fact, Shai Goitan in the 
uh, next session is going to talk about how he got $1.2 million uh, out of Kickstarter, which is a fascinating, a fascinating story. Quickly moving on, now at the top. Three forces. One, corporate investors. Corporate investors are changing the way small companies are behaving. Some of them actually direct themselves directly into the hands of corporate investors. Corporate investors are less sensitive for valuations. They are faster decision makers. And they change the way the venture capital industry is uh, behaving. Intel Capital, for example, is one of the largest investors in the world today. Another very important pressure is the pressure of uh, super angels. Super angels is, a, is a, a little bit of a vague term. These are people who are investing their own money. But now, A, they have much more money. And B, they are doing it almost in a professional level. So they are creaming all the new startups in a much faster decision maker. The example that I give here is a guy that essentially turned a, a million dollar investment into a $10 million dollar um, exit very quickly in less, of, less than a, a, a couple of months. Last but not least is the rise of regulation. Uh, how, many here, how many people here heard about AIFMD? That's not, okay, okay. So, so you understand the, the, the problem that is emerging here. This is like a complete new uh, structure to regulate the um, uh, investment industry out of Europe. And um, it, it, what you see here on the bottom on the right is a report by uh, Prequin that basically asks private equity professionals, what is the thing that most concerns you? Of course, the number one thing is, is regulation. So the bottom line is that this ecosystem, standard ecosystem, is changing. And I see these on the left as, as something that is happening and may end up, you know, crowdfunding may just die in a couple of years, etc. But at the end of the day, these things, messy, fast, and global, are here to stay. Messy, we see a little bit of confusion in the market. LPs want to invest directly. Angels are better than VCs. There are new ways to fund via clients, as we saw in Kickstarter. And there are new ways to innovate. For example, IVN and the platforms. Speed is yet another very important point. What you see here is a summary of how long it took a company to reach $150 billion of market share. Microsoft, 11 years, Intel, 27 years, Cisco, 9 years, etc. Apple, 27 years. Facebook, the blue, a year and a half. In fact, here it's 138 already today. 149, almost 150 billion, a year and a half. So things are really uh, changing rapidly. This is one example to the need to be speedy. Perhaps the most important trend affecting the ecosystem is the globalization. Here's an interesting example. This is the list of Israeli companies in New York City today. Israel, the capital of startups in the universe, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, these companies made the decision to move to New York because the condition in the certain area that they are, mostly advertisement, is better in New York. This is a very important trend because at the end of the day, globalization is pushing this very hard. Entrepreneurs can move from one place to another quite quickly. Venture capital firms are investing in companies all over the world. Institutional investors, for sure, are looking for the best returns and are looking to invest their money where the venture capital are more successful and they don't care about the places. Which leaves us with the public authorities. 
And I want to conclude here by essentially pointing at the public authorities as the most important player in setting up a fruitful ecosystem. Because all the other actors don't care. They don't care about location. So if we care about jobs, if we care about the quality of life, if we care about the specific of a particular location, then we definitely should turn into public authorities. Thank you very much. This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.